Okay, who's got the football? Minnie, you got the football? Great. The cooler? Right here. Mickey's got the... Who's got the raft? I do. Goofy, fantastic. Everybody got everything? Anything else? No, 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 Mickey. We don't need a hula hoop. We got enough already. Okay. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner, and welcome to the Disney Sunday movie. One of our great family traditions is the Sunday drive. We've all packed up the car with a few assorted belongings and taken off to the beach or the mountains. Hey, gang, we've got enough. We've got enough stuff. We're only going for one day. Anyway, at tonight's movie, Sunday Drive, Tony Randall, along with co-star Carrie Fisher, turns an ordinary Sunday drive into a not-so-ordinary adventure. Okay, that's it. Let's go. Wait a sec. Wait. Not that monkey. 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 Here we go. Goofy. Foot down. Let's go. Seat belts. Everybody buckle up. Hey, where's Bud? Bud. Where's Bud? There you are. Oh, come on. There you are. Sit down, Bud. Bud, sit down. Here we go. Hiya, Bud. Ah, uh, Goofy. Did you get gas? Dream Michael, I thought Mickey was gonna get the gas. This is known as a Sunday walk. August 15th, 1986. This is the worst summer of my life. This is the most horrible summer in my whole life. The most awful? the most boring summer in my entire life. Nothing ever happens here. Got a postcard from Mom and Dad. They're in Geneva. Daddy says the conference might last another two weeks. Aunt Joan and Uncle Bill try to be nice. I wish they'd just leave us alone. Sundays are the worst. He's out there. 20 seconds out counting. John Elliott, remember, he won't make any bathroom stop. Now, have we all been to the bathroom? Yes, yes Uncle, Uncle Bill. Bill. sharp. Daddy's got a real thing about lateness. Did you buy the Armani? I'm wearing it. Not with that awful pink tie, I hope. Oh, uh, what pink tie? Did you get a haircut? Yeah, 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 I trimmed it. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean to, but... Well, it's just that this interview is so important. I'm thinking about your future. Our future. Our future. Oh, call me before I leave the apartment. I will. Don't forget. No. Or I'll worry. I won't. Promise? I promise. I love you, Elmer. I love you. Come on. I love you, you crazy wabbit. Bye. Hey, Paul! 
Hey, Paul, I couldn't fit this one in the trunk of your car. It's okay, Dennis, you keep it. Seriously, it's one of the best things you've ever done. I'm on a paint more picture. Yeah, right, you'll be too busy designing cereal boxes. Shut up, Richard, you're just stealing. Come on, Paul, let's christen the car. Yeah. Hey, I just waxed it. Well, it's only apple cider. Come on to your new life in San Francisco. Yeah! yeah. Hey, Paul? Hmm. Bud won't take his car sleep pill. Oh, no, where is he? Good question. Bud! Bud! There he is. Good luck. Hi, Bud. Hi, Bud. Yeah, I've got a treat for you. Here you go. Come on, Bud. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bud. No, Bud, no. Okay, no. To the right, you'll see the very point where the first American ship from the east reached the California coast. If you were paying attention last Sunday, you'll know the name of that ship. No, Uncle Bill. There's a cow! One more gas station and I'll have bingo. Did you see that cow, John Elliott? Christine, did you see that cow? No, Aunt June. The name of the ship was the Otter. And the year was 1796. You better keep your eyes peeled or I'll be the summer champion. There, I see Wally Burgers. Turn right. Not lunchtime yet. How about a banana? Yeah. No, no, no. No eating in the car. Bananas don't make crumbs. They've had their breakfast, Joe. I don't like bananas. They have brown spots on them. I like Wally Burgers. It is 17.2 miles until lunch. Just imagine that you're explorers and you're trying to reach the top of Mount Everest. And if you stop now, you'll turn very blue and slowly freeze to death. Would you eat us? If we froze to death and you were starving and there was no food, would you eat me and Chris? Yes. Let's sing something. 100 bottles of beer on the wall. 100 bottles of beer, if one of them should happen to fall. 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. You take one down and... Hey, you want to walk? Hey, why aren't you sleeping? Those car sick pills usually put you into a light coma. You drool on this suit in your history. This is the suit of a rising young art executive. This is the suit of a young man in love with the most beautiful girl in the solar system. This is no ordinary suit. This suit was handmade by 14 Italian nuns who've devoted their entire lives to a fashion concept. Two of them have already gone blind doing inseams. I feel something suspiciously like drool just below my collarbone. Can you confirm that for me? to me. Uncle. Ah, oh, that's nice, John Elliot. You're my favorite nephew. I love you, Uncle Bill. Oh, I love you, John Elliot. Uncle Bill? John Elliot? I have to go. Mr. Younger, I want this job. I'm willing to work long, hard hours. To me, 
Advertising is the poetry of the 20th century. I mean that sincerely. May I show you my portfolio? And now for a weather update. On the coast, small craft warnings are posted. A storm front shifting north may bring some unexpected showers to the surrounding areas. Temperatures are expected to be in the mid... Leave your book in the car, Christine. Christine, would you like to leave your book in the car, dear? Or would you rather read at the table and appear rude? You decide. Can I bring my cards in? You decide, Johnny. Christine said Uncle Bill likes his place because they have all you can eat and he's a real skin trip. How? Sleeping. Till August 15th. We're at the Traveler's Inn for the fourth time in a row. How can I become a writer if I eat in the same restaurant every Sunday? I've almost finished reading. a roast beef sandwich to go, please. And uh, do you have a telephone? Pick a card, any card. Don't let me see it. Not while we're eating. Why not? You're the well-known author of How to Know Your Child. You explain to him why not. Uncle Bill would really like to see that trick after lunch. You said it was my choice if I wanted to be rude. John Elliot. When we sit down to a meal, we eat. If we want to see card tricks, we go to a magic show. If we want to read books, we go to the library. And if we want to sleep, we go to bed. Follow those simple rules and you won't go wrong. Also, always peel the fruit in a foreign country. Are we in a foreign country now? I'll be right back. I'm going to use the phone. I felt sorry for him. Who goes to the Statue of Liberty at 1 o'clock in the morning? That's what I should have said. Excuse Lizzie me? Kef, party of two. Your table's ready. What? She's two years old. Can't she do that by herself? All right. All right. I'll call you later. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I was waiting for this phone. You were nowhere near the phone. Look, this is an emergency. Yes, I was waiting. I was standing right over there, not more than 10 feet away. Two feet. That's the rule. You have to be no more than two feet away from the phone. You can't even say that you're waiting. I never heard of that rule. Did you hear what I said? I said this is a life and death call. Emergency call. Yes, and I have an emergency too. You see, my girlfriend is leaving her apartment in exactly one minute. And if I don't call her, she's going to think that I forgot. A girlfriend is not an emergency. A dead car is an emergency. Your dead car isn't going anywhere. My girlfriend is. Out with somebody else if she's got half a brain. Party of four, your table's raised. Jam, if you had waited your turn. Two feet. No more than two feet away from the phone to qualify for waiting. It's an international understanding. Like the sign for choking. I think he's got ants in his pants, eh, Sport? I lost my magic dice. His uneaten sandwich cost three fifty. They're probably in the car. We'll find them. I want to find them now. Christine, here, open the car for your brother. Hold his hand in the parking lot. We'll be right out. Pay the check, Bill. 
When I was a little boy, we didn't leave the table until we were excused. I gave the children their space. You gave them your car keys. I hate the last part of the trip. It always seems longer. He'll make us get out at Point West and tell us about the Spanish mission. She'll want to sing old McDonald's. Hey, when they come, let's pretend we're sleeping. Okay, good idea. Now, if you had read even one of my books, you'd understand that children need to feel in control of their lives. When actually they control other people's lives. I know you, you mean well, but you're always lecturing. Relate to them on their own level. You were a child once. Never. Enter into their world. Play one of their games. Children invite adults to play, but adults don't pick up on their cues. When I married you, you were going to write military cookbooks. You understood army food. They're hiding under the blanket. That's our cue. Oh, dear. Where could the children be? I'm so worried. Oh, dear, I'm worried, too. Where, oh, where can they be? Let's guess the magic word for making them appear. Let me see now. Alex is down! beef sandwich here for you when you regain consciousness. Are you crazy? I could have I... killed you! You. You're supposed to be six inches from the curb when hitchhiking. Six inches! It's an international understanding! It's been months since I've committed an axe murder. Maybe you've heard of me. The highway killer. <laughs> That's a joke. I only meant that I'm harmless. You can put down the wrench. Hi, my name's Paul Sheridan. Do you want me to guess your name? Okay. Um... I think I know what it is. Eunice. No? Uh, Gertrude. Was that an eye blink? Does that mean yes, Gertrude? Not Gertrude. Am I getting warmer? Is it my turn again? Let's see now. I know the perfect magic word. Chocolate, double dip, super sprinkled ice cream sandwich for the first one who says hooray! I, I 
guess they must be asleep. We can stop playing now. Oh, no. I barely tapped my vast store of magic words. We can wake them up when we get to Point West. Hooray! <laughs> Isadora. Griselda. Ursula? Franny. That was my next guess. Well, now that we know each other, we can relax. I'm relaxed. The wrench? Are you from New York? Look, I'm very grateful for the ride and all that, and I'll be happy to pay for my share of the gas. But if you don't mind, I'm not in the mood for small talk. Sorry. Don't mention it. I won't. Then don't. I'm not. Where are you taking me? To get gas. Fill it up, would you? And have you got a phone? <sighs> Who are you? Who are you? Uh, your uncle is making a phone call. He'll be right back. Don't be scared. I'm Franny. I have to go to the men's room. Would the ladies' room be all right? Susan? Oh, there you are. I almost called out the highway patrol. Why didn't you call? I am calling. Yes, but we had arranged a time. What happened to you? Look, I... Susan, I'm sorry. I ran into a little trouble, but everything is fine now. I couldn't leave the apartment until I heard from you. I'm late for Mr. Yang now. I thought you were dead. I thought you'd forgotten. I, I didn't forget. Everything is fine. Paul, I told Mr. Jennings that you had a degree from UCLA. What? Well, it's what he wanted to hear. In this business, you've got to tell people what they want to hear. But... It's a lie. He could check. He won't check. Just remember, if he asks you, say you see a light. I love you, Elmer. I love you, you poisy wabbit. That's Christine. Where's Aunt Joan? Aunt Joan? company in the back seat. Oh, he woke up? Well, he had to go to the bathroom. I took him. Oh. How old is he? Oh, Bud's uh, about four. He said his name was John Elliott. Is that what he said? He's not four, but six. He said that too? Yes, he did. He's pulling your leg. He's awfully big for four. You're from L.A., aren't you? As she turned around and walked into the night, she was sure everything was going to turn. Are you a Springsteen fan? He said you were 
said you were his uncle. Oh, and he said, that, look, I don't mean to hurt your feelings. My own mother talks to You're clients. not his uncle, are you? What have you done with Aunt Joan? All right, we're coming up to Point West. I want everybody awake. Let's see how much history you remember from last week. What does the date 1825 remind you of? Stop the car. Just stop the car right now. I'm not stopping this car. All right, the game is over. You can play hide and seek some other time. Oh, Bill. What's the matter with you? Pull over. You're not out from under that blanket. By the time I count three, no more Sunday drives. Bill. One. Two. I said stop the car. You are a kidnapper, aren't you? I knew it. You have murdered Aunt Joan. Stop this car. Are you crazy? You'll kill us both. Kidnapper. Kidnapper. Keep a cool head, Joan. We've lost the children! One thing at a time. We must regain the car. Now, you, distract the animal. Keep moving, keep moving. Haven't you ever seen a dog in a car before? Keep moving. I warned you, if you lay a hand on either one of these children, I will not be accountable for my actions. This may very well be my last message to the world. My brother and I have been kidnapped. Look, I didn't kidnap. Uh... Where are your parents? In Geneva. What's your name? Angelica. No, it's not. Well, it's Christine, but if I'm going to die, I'd like to spend my last few moments with Angelica. But you are not going to uh... die. Uh... You're not going to die. No one's going to hurt you. This is all some crazy mistake, and we're going to straighten it out. Could you call me Angelica anyway? <sighs> okay, Angelica. Where's my dog? The dog? What about Aunt Joan? I don't suppose you'd like to show us what's in that trunk there. Fine. You think opening the trunk is going to help? Fine. Open the trunk. You want to use the key, or you want to break it open with your wrench? extra change of clothes in case we spill on him. This isn't my car. Of course not. It's Uncle Bill's. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Officer Cooper. This is Sergeant Penny. We'd like to ask you a few questions, if we may. First of all, is this your car, sir? Yes, it is. Your dog? No, it is not. Then what's it doing inside your car, sir? Barking. Look, we had two children in the back of this car. Now there's this animal. Doesn't that tell you something? Where are we going? Back to the Traveler's Inn. Again? That's where this mix-up must have happened. Look, it's very simple. Two cars, same make, same model, pull into the same parking lot. Owner A eats comes out, gets into owner B's car, etc., etc. By now, both parties realize their mistake. They return to the scene of the error. Owner A gets back his car, owner B gets back their car. No fuss, no lawsuits, and everybody lives happily ever after. I don't like the Traveler's Inn. I like Wally Burgers. Uh, look, I, I want to apologize for the way that I acted. It's perfectly understandable, given the circumstances. Stealing a car isn't half as bad as kidnapping and murder. I, I didn't steal the car. Well, you're taking it back now. That's the important thing. It was a mix-up. I didn't steal the car. Look out! Oh, no. Now what? Oh, 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 oh,
anything for your license and registration, please, sir. What about the children? I called in a description of the children you claimed are missing. Claim? License and registration, please. Thank you. This is the wrong registration. What are you talking about? That's my registration. This may be your registration, but that's not your car. Yo, Jimmy, suspicion of a stolen vehicle here? You want to run a check on a William R. Franklin? Would you be good enough to read that name again, please? General William R. Franklin? That is correct, son. You are looking at a retired Brigadier General. Wow. You can say that again. General, do you mind stepping over here so that we may ascertain the alcohol level in your blood? Oh! It's been a long time, I guess. Should we escape? I don't think so. I could escape from this car blindfolded with my arms and legs tied like Boudini. No one's gonna tie you up. What if we never get home? Of course we'll get home. What if we're stuck here forever and ever and we starve and we froze and we'll have to eat each other? No one's gonna eat you and it doesn't freeze where we live. I won't let anything happen to you, so don't cry. I wasn't crying. I meant in case you felt like crying. Uncle Bill's gonna be mad. No, he won't. It wasn't our fault. He'll still be mad. How's everybody back here? I can escape any time I want, even if you tie me up. I told him no one was going to tie him up. Of course not. Uh, we're we're going to get you back. Everything's going to be fine. We've just run into a little traffic jam. But I'm sure that it'll clear up in a couple of minutes, and then we'll just barrel right out of here and... Rock slide. Rock slide? Yes. You know, California is falling into the Pacific. Large portions of land dribble down onto the highway and block traffic for six hours while men remove it one pebble at a time. Six hours? I have to go. So do I. Look, my boat leaves tomorrow from San Francisco at 2 o'clock. If I'm not on it, I'll have one very expensive, unrefundable ticket to Sydney, Australia. Wait, what are you doing? Heading north. You, you can't leave just like that. You're my witness. Look, what if they've called the police? They, they may need a statement. You've been in the car the entire time, and you know I haven't done anything to those kids. Look, I'd like to help you out. I really would, but I have to catch that boat. Look, I'll get you to the boat. You have my solemn promise. I'm sorry. Come on! You can't just leave those kids. I mean, what if I really am a kidnapper or a, or a homicidal murderer, an international terrorist? Did you ever think about that? Look at him. How can you walk out on two kids who might be in danger? You don't know me. You, you don't care what happens to me, but what about them? What about those kids? You listen to them, honey. You're not a homicidal murderer. I'm beginning to feel like one. I, I, I really am. Please. You'll get me to my boat on time. As that lady in the champagne rabbit is my witness. We'll get out of here right away. I know a shortcut to Route 5. Okay. Oh, yeah. Touch your finger to your nose, please. Two children are missing, and you're asking me to play games with my nose. Finger to your nose. I am not drunk. Are you refusing to cooperate? Bill, please. <laughs> Now, let me see you walk this line. I have memorized your badge number, Sergeant. That's swell. The line, sir? Uh, excuse me, General. We just ran a check. It seems that you and Mrs. Franklin don't have any children. Christine and John Elliott are my brother's children. <laughs> and I suppose this is your brother's dog. I thought you knew a shortcut to Route 5. I do. It's the next right. August 15th. There are no signs of life. We have no food and no water. We are hopelessly lost and do not expect to survive this journey. We are not hopelessly lost. I know where I am.
Mr. Sheridan is doing his best to keep up morale. I want to go home. I don't want to be dead. Now look what you did. You don't need to yell at her. She didn't do anything. Look, there is no reason to panic. It is a simple matter of choice. Heads we go on, tails we go back. You're going to flip a coin? No, you're going to flip it. It only works if somebody else flips it. Go ahead. Look, I've done this before. I have complete faith in that coin. Trust me. Is it a magic coin? Exactly. Flip it. Heads. Heads. Route 5 is straight ahead. Still August 15th. It started raining. Mr. Sheridan still has not found Route 5. We encountered some natives and asked for their assistance. Miss Jessup says I can call her Franny. She's very nice and has beautiful eyes. The same color as Julia's, and Julia's left hope. Despite Mr. Sheridan's confidence in the natives, their directions turned out to be false. Once again, we despair. Mr. Sheridan seems nervous about an appointment he has in San Francisco. He no longer talks about Route 5. He says he would give his right arm for a telephone. Franny says Mr. Sheridan has a girlfriend in San Francisco. When I write about this, I think I will call Franny Rosalie Hudson. And Mr. Sheridan will be Ellen C. Love. John Elliott says he wants to be called C-3PO. I, of course, will be Angelica. We don't know if we're heading north or south. This is the most incredible adventure of my entire life. Sergeant, that rock slide really got them backed up out there. It's getting dark. They must be terrified. Who knows what kind of a person is driving our car? Judging by his dog, he's probably a professional rescuer. <laughs> General, Mrs. Franklin? You found them. You found the children. Oh, no, I'm sorry, ma'am. Nothing yet. I'm afraid I'm going to have to book you, sir. The charge is resisting an officer and refusing to cooperate during a drunk driving test. I did cooperate. It says here in this report that you lay down and refused to complete the test. Lay down? This enormous dog knocked me down. <laughs> sure. Take care of it. It wasn't funny. Did you get her a drink of water? Get her a drink of water. All I know is what I read in the report, sir. Good boy. Good boy. That's fine. That's fine. Get you folks a room? No, no, I just want to use the phone. I need to make a call, too. Just two calls. I have to call the police and get rid of these kids, and then I have to call Susan. I have to confirm my ticket. Yes, after I call Susan. No, I need to make my call first. But you can make your call Before yours. after mine. We've got two phones. Where? No, uh, that wall over there. <sighs> this one's not working. That one never does. Uh, I got a dial tone. Fair is fair. I'll toss you to see who goes first. I'm calling it. Heads. Tails. Uh, listen, don't you think my call to the police is top priority? Thank you. Hello, I'd like to make a collect person-to-person -person call to Miss Susan Younger. The number is 415-555-3729. My name is Paul. I thought you were going to call the police. I will, right after this. You said top priority. Look, you don't seem to understand that if I am late for this interview tomorrow, my life might as well be... Hello, Susan! We have a terrible connection. I can barely hear you. Can you call me back? No, no, I can't. Susan, listen, I may be late tomorrow. What? I can't hear you. Susan, there's been a rock slide. I love you. I miss you. 
Don't be late tomorrow. Susan, did you hear me? Oh, yes, now I can hear you. Do you love me? Yes. <laughs> now, listen, Susan. No, you have to say it. Franny, do you mind? Paul? Who's Franny? Ah, uh, nobody. Now, listen, Susan. Paul, where are you calling from? I don't know. It's some uh, roadhouse. Listen, I need you to reschedule... Some what house? Susan, I need you to reschedule the interview. Susan? It's gone dead. Are there any more phones? They're all out. It's a storm. Can I uh, get you folks a room? How could you? One call left in the whole world and you had to make it to her. If you'd called the police, they would have come for the children. We probably would have been flown out of here by helicopter. But now we're stuck here. Well, I'll probably sell my ticket to someone else. I'll never see Willamalu Bay. I'll never go Opal Foster King and Cooper Petty. Forget it, Franny. We are not stuck here. We are not stuck! We're going back out on that highway. We're going to find the highway patrol at... Will you give her a map, please? Where are the kids? Christine! John Elliott! Oh, oh, great, great. I'm glad you ordered, okay? Let's just make it to go, all right? I'll put this one in my pocket, and this one, let's... Oh, here, we'll put this like this, and you hold this. And you carry the chips, okay? Carry the chips. You... What about dessert? This one goes in your mouth. Oh, pepper, okay? Uh, now this, I'm sure I will take care of the check. I have to go. There is no time to go, John Elliott. We are out of time. This show is on the road. And my life is at stake here. So we're all gonna click our heels together and go back to Kansas, okay? Okay? Let's go. I guess we won't be needing that room after all. I have an interview waiting for me in San Francisco. And I have a steamer, but that becomes immaterial if we drive up a mountain. Susan would rather I were dead than late. Well, if Susan were here, I'm sure she'd have a different opinion. I know I do. I didn't ask for your opinion. I didn't ask for Susan's. Could we leave Susan out of this, please? You're the one that keeps bringing her up. Please pull over. Not until we reach the highway. I have made up my mind, and nothing is going to change it. You folks a room? Complimentary breakfast included. Candles are extra. We'll continue after these messages. It's about to... to three, you will rise and do my bidding. One, two, three. Oh, 
You shouldn't have tried to lift that tree. Looking back on the experience, I tend to agree with you. John Elliott wants to know if we have to be in bed by 8. No. Do we have to take baths? No. Brush our teeth? No. Our hair? No. Prayers? Prayers might be in order. Where's Franny going to sleep? Pay attention. Now watch this. Roll. Roll over. Roll over. Roll over. Adam, boy. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Now watch this. Watch this. Bud. Shake. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that great? He didn't know that one. I taught him that one right here in the cell. Didn't I, fella? Didn't I, fella? Yes. I knew a guy in Sing Sing once. He had a pet rat. Could it do tricks? Okay, Jimmy, up and up. You've got a visitor, Jimmy. A visitor? Yeah, your wife's recovered and she wants to see you. Ah, oh, come on. Come with me. Come on. Atta boy. This way, atta boy. I thought you might want a pillow. Thank you. Should we toss a coin to see who gets the bed? No, no, look, I, I'm not going to sleep tonight anyway, not until I've returned those kids. First thing in the morning, we find a highway patrol station. Well, maybe the phones will be working by then and we can call their aunt and uncle. Yeah. <sighs> You're sure you don't want to toss for the bed? I'm sure. Good night. Good night. Oh, look, forget about those. They're completely ruined. Oh, no, a, a good tailor might be able to fix them. Not by tomorrow at one o'clock. This interview, it means a lot to you, doesn't it? <sighs> Susan really went to a great deal of trouble just to get me in the door. There are a lot of applicants more qualified than I am. And what have I done for the past six years? Nothing but paint. Where's it been getting me? <laughs> Last year, I didn't even make enough money to file an income tax return. I didn't even recognize the implication until Susan pointed it out. The implication? Peter Pan syndrome. Oh. Uh -huh. Did uh, Susan pick out the suit? She has impeccable taste in everything. Clothes, restaurants, hotels, theater. If it isn't the best, she doesn't want it. She always sends back the wine. Ah. Oh. Well, she sounds like a wonderful, wonderful girl. She is. She's very, um... Demanding. I wasn't going to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to understand about Susan. She had a terrible handicap to overcome. Handicap? Her appearance. Beautiful women aren't taken seriously in the business world. Susan is the first beautiful woman to ever become a senior executive at Jennings, Stein and Younger. And believe me, it had nothing to do with her father being on the board. Well, I hope you make that interview tomorrow. I hope you catch that boat to New Zealand. Australia. Australia. Good night. Good night. prison food. He's losing weight. But? Don't you think he's definitely thinner? 
You've only been in jail a few hours. Maybe it's the light in here. I called a lawyer. I don't want a lawyer. I figured this whole thing out. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession? I don't intend to give Bud up. Bud? Watch this. Shake. Have you ever been in love, Franny? Mm, well, that depends on what you mean by in love. Have you ever been married? No. Do you have a job? Mm, I used to work in a bank, but I quit. Why? Well, I had this little desk in a corner, and people used to come and buy traveler's checks for me. Every time somebody came to my desk, I would wonder where they were going and what they were going to do and who they were going to meet and what languages they were going to hear. Sometimes I would pretend that the traveler's checks were for me. And then, actually, a couple of times I went home and packed a little suitcase. I want to see my mother. You will. First thing tomorrow morning. No, we won't. She's in Geneva. Well, you'll see your Aunt Joan tomorrow morning, and then you'll see your mother when she gets back. I want to see her now. Speaking of Geneva, have either of you ever been to Australia? Have you? Well, I've never actually been anywhere yet, but I do know about Australia. Like, um... Well, they speak English there, but they have words all their own, like, um... Jumbuck is a sheep, and Huru is goodbye. And if they think that you're a fool, they call you a no-hoper. In Dubbo, you can visit a sheep station and have lunch in the outback under the gum trees. And you're, you're sitting there and you're sipping your billy tea. And you're listening to an aborigine play on a eucalyptus leaf. And when you hear the kookaburra laugh, you know that the sun is going down. Do you know the kookaburra song? Uh-uh. Kookaburra sits on the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bushes, he. La, kookaburra, la, kookaburra, hey, your life must be. You make it sound like paradise. Oh, it's just stuff that I learn in books. Your hair looks nice down like that. Thank you. Well, good night. Good night. You step this way, please. Good news, ma'am. Patrolman busted a bunch of bikers. This one here says he saw your niece and nephew. Get one of our boys working up a composite on the driver. Were the children all right? It looked okay to me. I owe you a debt of gratitude I can never repay. And I know that your rebellious appearance is just a bid for your father's love. You're not... No. Yes, you are. You are, aren't you? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Hey, everybody, look. It's Joan Hanks, the one who wrote Kids, Kids, Kids. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, Miss Hanks, also, your, uh, your lawyer called, and I'm happy to tell you we will be releasing your husband on bail. Uh, Was Nikki, would you let Mr. Hanks out of cell number four? Oh, well, isn't that nice? Oh. Now we're going to put the two of you up in the Beams Motel, courtesy of the precinct. Oh, that's so sweet. And don't you worry, ma'am. We're going to get those kids back safe and sound. Here it is, sir. Thanks. in bed, do you? Did you hear them saying goodnight to each other? Who? Frankie and Mr. Sheridan. It was like a winter of love. 
when James and Allison said goodbye in the drawing room. The whole room shook with unspoken passion. Can we go back to bed now? Listen, we have to do something. What? We can't let Mr. Sheridan go back to his girlfriend. Why not? He and Franny are kismet. What's kismet? It means they're meant for each other. No, they're not. They fight. That's because they're in love. Can we go back to bed? Just wait a minute. We haven't thought of a plan yet. I'm sorry, sir. We don't allow dogs. Why not? It's a rule. He's a very well-behaved dog. I'm sure he is, sir. It's a rule. Look, it's very late. It's pouring rain. Don't you think just this one time you could make an exception? He might bark and disturb the other guests. Oh, no, he would never do that. Dogs carry fleas. Not him. He might have an accident on the rug. Never. I don't make the rules, sir. I'm not asking you to make the rules. I'm asking you to break the rules. Maybe he could sleep in the car. Night, Joan. Bill, it's freezing out here. You'll get pneumonia. Bill! Good night, Joan. We'll return after these messages. Trident helps fight cavities, and it always has. Helps fight cavities? Come on. I mean, I've been fighting cavities all this time without even knowing it. I knew Trident didn't cause cavities, but help fight them. Be great if it's true. New dental studies prove chewing Trident after sugary snacks reduces acids that form on teeth. It's these acids that can cause cavities. Ask your dentist. It's nice to hear a little good news once in a while. Something that's delicious and good for you, too? Why chew any other gum? Trident, good to chew and fights cavities, too. Enjoying that crispy cereal, Lewis? Mm-hmm. Oh, side of corn, side of rice, sure makes it crispy. But the corn's crispier. Why, once I ate a bowl in Dugan's Apple Grove, the crunch from the corn side shook those apples right off of the trees. Grandpa, last turn the rice side was crispier. Rice side? Kellogg's Crisp Picks is crispy times. Hey, this is not your ordinary mix. Nope, I made it with Crisp Picks. So it's crispier. No kidding. My darling Crystal, I've had this fragrance created especially for you. I think it's as beautiful as you are. Every time you wear it, remember, I love you forever. My dearest Blake, I've had this fragrance created especially for you. I think it's as sexy as you are. And every time you wear it, remember that I'll love you forever, too. Forever Crystal and Carrington, both created to celebrate the love that lives forever. Tell of the world. They're made in the USA label. It matters so much because of what it really stands for. Tell of the world. It stands for the quality of the clothes we work in. And the style and fashions we play in. And it stands for America, for what we are today. And what will be tomorrow. Tell of the world. So ask for and buy apparel and hold fashion that say, made in the USA. Tell of the world. magic of Walt Disney. It reaches far beyond movie theaters and theme parks. Now with Disney classics like Sleeping Beauty available on video cassette, you can share the Disney experience wherever you are, whenever you want. We now return to the Disney Sunday movie. I could write beautiful letters to Mr. Sheridan and sign Franny's name. That would get things started. It's the best plan so far. 
but there just isn't enough time. I guess there's nothing we can do. Except immortalize their ill-fated love story. I'll make it my first novel. What do you think of this? She marries an Australian sheep breeder. He marries Susan. Then one day when they're both very old, 36 or 37, they meet again and confess their love. Sounds stupid. Listen, chapter one. Over the mountain, a majestic ball of fire rose to illuminate the beautiful clear morning. Christine? John Elliot. Oh. <coughs> Christine! What are you doing sleeping in the bathtub? Get up, we, we've got to leave. I'll get your clothes. Paul! Paul, we've been... Paul, where are you? I woke up and he was gone. Now we have no way of getting out of here. I have to be in San Francisco by 2 o'clock. These children have to be returned to their rightful owner. I'm sorry, lady. The phones are still out. Someone must have a car. You must have a car or a truck or a... Paul. We thought you'd gone. I had to go to the car to get some clothes. Those are Uncle Bill's favorite pants. He's gonna kill you. Not if I kill myself first. Okay, let's uh, pay the bill and get on out of here. One night, $65. Candles, two dollars a piece. It's forty-seven fifty. Firewood, twenty-nine even, comes to one forty-one fifty plus tax. Two dollars a piece for candles. That's robbery. Toss your fork. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid. Double afraid. or nothing. Double or nothing. Franny, you call it. Heads. Tails. You've been a very fine sport, sir. It's oh. been a pleasure doing business with you. I'm going to recommend this place to all my friends. Okay, let's go. Tour bus is leaving. Everybody out. This is a lovely place. We enjoyed the service. Swell view. Uh, keep the quarter. Thank you. I'm sorry, we don't allow dogs in this restaurant. Dogs? Under the table. Oh, oh, he's, uh, he's specially trained. I don't care if he can juggle oranges and recite Shakespeare. He, uh, he detects poison in food. The other side is constantly trying to get rid of me. You can imagine what that would mean to national security. National security? You recognize me now? You do look kind of familiar, aren't ah, you? No names. Watch. He's all right. You better let him taste your coffee. Ah. It is a wonderful thing you have done for your country today. All right, new deal. We are going north. We're going to take 101 and we get to Milltown. The road is clear, we get to the highway. Averaging 55 miles an hour, including one stop for gas, we should get to San Francisco by noon. Any questions? I'm hungry. That's not a question. Anyone else? Well, you have to feed the children. Why? They're growing. They can grow tomorrow. Look, I'm just as anxious to get to San Francisco as you are. Do you want them to tell the police that we tried to starve them? I want a Wally Burger. There are no Wally Burgers in the middle of nowhere. Yes, there is. Over there. Oh, that's Bud, my dog. I sure hope he's being treated all right. 
Uncle Bill hates pets. Great. Who's this? Her name is Susan. Want to see? Uh, not just now. She's even more handicapped than I imagined. All right. Ah. Yay. Yay, Wally Burger. Right. Are the phones working yet? Yeah, there's one there. Nobody ever let me have a Wally Burger for breakfast before. Yes, collect from Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. Miss Younger isn't here now. She's jogging. What? And goodbye. Wait a minute. No. San Francisco police, please. Those lines are tied up. Is this a storm-related emergency? Yes. One moment, please. Sergeant Keener, may I help you? Ah, at last. Uh, look, Sergeant, my name is Paul Sheridan, and I've got these two young kids. Just a minute, Mr. Sheridan. Hey, put a tracer in this. I have the kidnapper on the line. <clears throat> Where are you calling from, Mr. Sheridan? Uh, Wally Burgers. L look, Sergeant, I want you to get in touch with their aunt and uncle. It's uh, Bill and Joan Franklin. They're probably very worried. Yes, they are, as a matter of fact, and they're ready to meet with your demands. As long as the children are okay. Uh, my demands? Whatever you want, provided the children are all right. John Elliot got a little bruise on his arm when he fell off the bed, but he didn't cry or anything. I... Uh, I'd like to speak to the boy. Could you bring him to the phone, please? Uh, no, no, he's eating right now. Uh, look, Sergeant, I just want to get rid of these kids. Of course you do. Hey, call me, Phil. You just tell me what you want, and I'll see that you get it. What I want? I'm on your side. No ransom demand. You can trust me. Just turn that up, please. The suspected kidnapper is not known. Highway patrolmen warn that he may possibly be armed. Anyone seeing this man should not approach him, but should immediately contact... Uh, Paul, are you there? I repeat, yeah, anyone you, seeing this man should not approach him, but should immediately contact the police. And now for the weather. The weather continues to be... Incredible food, my compliments. We're getting out of here. I'm not Yes. Oh, yes, you are. Where's Fran? She went to the car to change. Why? I spilled my drink on her. I want another one. No! Do you really think he might be armed? Probably not, but there's no point in taking any chances. Our computer's up this morning. We've traced the car's owner. His name's Paul Sheridan, and he is wanted by the police. <gasps> For what? Uh, 17 unpaid parking tickets. The best thing you can do now is to go home. Well, we just can't go home. Money is what he's after. Sheridan will probably try and contact you. Do you know your uncle's address? 1704 Tilton Drive. Could you find that on the map, please? What are you going to do? You don't seem to understand something. I am wanted for kidnapping, armed and dangerous. I can't just turn these kids over to the first cop on the street. He'll shoot me on sight. No, he won't. He'll arrest you. Thank you. I feel much better. Everything's gonna be all right, kids. I'm gonna take you right to your doorstep. I'll explain everything to Aunt Bill and Uncle Joan and every... Did you find it yet? I can't. Give it to me, I'll find it. Yeah, I'm gonna take you right to your doorstep. I'll buy your uncle a beer and, 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 and we'll talk about the Raiders and have a good laugh and... Uh... How do you spell that street? T-I-L-T-O-N. It's in Oakland. Look, you're not going to find it on that. Look, map. I'll find it. Will you just relax? No, you won't. Would because... you stop being so negative? You're upsetting the children. Ever since we started out, that's all I've ever gotten from you is negativity. Why can't you just one time think positive? Why can't you just one time... Oh, Brenda's not on that map! Look out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch Robert and Lynn trusted us with their children. They trusted us. Before we left, he said, Bill, take care of my most precious possessions. It's all my fault. I was trying to give them their space. No, I'm the one who insisted on a Sunday drive. It's my fault. 
Robert's my brother. I'm going to tell him the truth. Why didn't I look under the blanket? The little nipper only wanted a Wally burger. If I'd let him have it, none of this would have happened. Oh. If they were both here, I'd just hug them so tight. Oh, I'd let them go to every restroom in the world. I can almost hear John Elliott's happy little laugh. See Christine's large, expressive eyes? Bill. Why? Look, they're oh. back. Oh, thank you. It's Robert and Lynn. You're not supposed to be back until next week. What do we do? Keep driving. We will continue after these messages. It's a world of celebration, joyful yuletide expectation, where peace and love are felt throughout the land. It's an Eminem's chocolate candy season, moms and Santas know the reason. The milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. All the world loves Eminem's, they're pure milk chocolate joy for everyone. Eminem's chocolate candies, the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. These lonely pound puppies need someone to love. Someone who'd love a little puppy love. For you, Grandma. Pound puppies are as cuddly as real puppies. He'll keep you company in the dorm. They're the perfect way to say, I love you. For birthdays, holidays, or any day. Pound puppies, so soft and adorably lonely. Sometimes the hardest thing about giving them. Merry Christmas. Is giving them up. Pound puppy, you're my one and only puppy love. Teach your children well, their skill will tell how life will go by and show them their own dreams. The one they'll pick is the one they'll know by. Nothing's more important than teaching children. That's why more schools teach on Apple than any other computer. And know they love you. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring except Fievel the Mouse. Presenting Fievel, the adorable star of Steven Spielberg's presentation of the Don Bluth film An American Tale. Now collect all four different McDonald's stocking ornaments featuring Fievel. Each one comes free when you buy the perfect stocking stuffer. A $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates. This holiday season, give a terrific surprise. Free Fievel stockings with our gift certificates inside. Our World. The New York Daily News calls it sassy and substantial. One heck of a show. UPI says, Tate Cosby, watch Our World. And the New York Times says, Thursday's look at the summer of 1940. Santa, can you bring me a zebra? I don't want to call a kitty cat that's not scared of people. I like a puppy. I want you to give my mom roses, and I want Dad to have one little flower. May all your wishes come true. Season's greetings from your local bottler of Coca-Cola. Okay, everybody, dig in. Okay. okay, go ahead. Go ahead. The only way to deal with a serious case of pizza craving is to enter group therapy. Proceed with several friends to your nearest pizza hut and order a large pan pizza with all your favorite toppings. <laughs> See? It works. Kingsport, Johnson City, Bristol, Tennessee. This is Stereo, WKPT, TV 19. continue with the Disney Sunday movie. It's really simple from here. Then once you get to the city, the kids can call their aunt and uncle. I can make my interview and you can catch your boat. Uh, where are the kids? Over there in that clearing. Don't worry, I can see them from here. Kids are always knocked out by the forest. 
I remember when my father first brought me up here. Summer of 69, Labor Day weekend. I was here that weekend with my scout troop. You're kidding. I wandered off and got lost. That's right. I, I remember something about a search party. I wanted to join, but my father said I was too young. Oh, it was so embarrassing. I mean, you're supposed to know how to use a compass when you're a scout. I can't picture you in a scout uniform. You don't seem the uniform type. I don't. No. You're more, uh, one of a kind, I guess. Odd, you mean? I meant it as a compliment. It's funny, isn't it? Both of us up here that same weekend, we might have met. Uh, give me a hand, would you? No job. <laughs> Get over, you know. What's over? Everything. Our adventure. Mr. Sheridan and Franny. Did you see the picture of Susan? Mm-hmm. So what'd you think? She was okay. Okay? She only looked like Rebecca in Tomorrow We Dream. Long golden hair and violet eyes. How can Franny compete with that? What are you doing? It's right under the spoon over there. Like that, with the power of my mind. Just like the guy on the Johnny Carson show. Use the power of your mind to make Mr. Sheridan kiss Franny. I hate kissing. Uh, look, I, uh, I don't want to apologize for losing my temper about the map. I, I had no right to yell at you. Oh, that's okay. And you haven't been negative at all. Just for the record, you've been very positive. In fact, you've been terrific. The kids, the whole situation. It sounds funny, but I'm glad you were here. Well, I'm, I'm glad I was here, too. I don't mean I'm glad any of us were here. Well, I'm, I'm not glad that I was here, either. I well, but just... since we are here, I'm glad at least well, that's... you were here. Yeah, but that's essentially what I meant, also. I just hope Susan didn't see me on the morning news. I'll get the kids. Everybody. Let's go. We're on a tight schedule. You've got ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. I was gonna make you the hero of my novel, but you're turning out to be just like Uncle Bill. Am I right, Joan? Absolutely top-notch. <laughs> so where are they hiding? We... Who? The kids. They're not here now. Oh, no, oh, no. They're, they're not here now. What are we, we are standing are around for? Come on, let's sit down. Yeah, let's have a cup of coffee. Yeah, oh, come on. Have a cup. I'll tell you about Bud. Come on. <laughs> come on. Let's just... <laughs> Search continues for 
Franklin kidnapping. The police are asking the public to watch out for a blue four-door sedan driven by the suspect, Paul Sheridan. Anyway, John Elliott lost his magic wallet. No, no, his magic dice, dear. Yeah, yeah, his magic dice. <laughs> well, Bill, get to the point. Where are the kids? That's what I'm trying to tell you. We... Well, I... See, I, I, I tried to give the children a sense of their own space. Yeah. See, it's, it's very important for children to feel in control of their environment. Joan, has something happened to the children? Oh. I'll get it. <laughs> Hello? Christine! It's Christine! It's Christine! Oh! Oh! Oh, Christine! How nice of you to phone, dear. I'm calling from a gas station. Mr. Sheridan needs to be at an interview at uh, Jennings, Simon Younger, 333 Hyde Park. Can you pick us up there? Yes, of course we will. You just wait for us there. And guess what? Oh, don't tell them we're here. It'll be a surprise. Oh, Mr. Sheridan said to bring his dog, too, okay? Jessup. J-E-S-S-U-P. Yes, Miss Jessup. Your passage is confirmed. Okay, thanks. Listen to me, Susan. You've got to reschedule the interview. Paul. The art director flew in from New York to see your portfolio. Daddy rearranged all his meetings. Plus, he's going to Hawaii tomorrow for six weeks. You can't say reschedule. Just like that? Not in the real world. Besides, you're in enough trouble as it is. Daddy saw you on the morning news. I had a terrible time convincing him of some other Paul Sheridan. Susan, listen to me. I... I don't know if I want to listen to you. Who was Franny? And what were you doing in one of those houses? Susan, I swear there's a very reasonable explanation for everything. No, well, there won't be anything to explain if you're not here by one o'clock. Susan, I have no clothes to... Susan? Police? You know that kidnap car you had in the morning news? Pulling out of my gas station right now. Well, thank God they're all right. The nightmare is over. I'll offer him five hundred dollars. Well, Christine didn't say anything about a ransom. Think that's too much? Think I should start lower and let him work me up? Well, if he'd wanted money, she'd have said so. Of course he wants money. You don't give away a dog like Bud for nothing. Mm. Right, soldier? Mm. You stay with them until their uncle comes, or tell them to leave Bud in my car. Okay. Okay, Houdini. I don't suppose you could change these pants into a silk suit. Good luck with your novel, Angelica. I hope you find a real hero. Gonna wish me luck? Good, Good luck. luck. Thanks. Wonderful artist. Artists don't make enough money to pay their taxes. Why would anyone want to pay their taxes? They have to go to the men's room. Would you settle for the ladies' room? There they are! I Where? see them! I don't see anybody. They just went in that building. All right, now the main thing is keep calm, they're safe. Don't act too fond of Bud, whatever you do. What? It'll just drive up the price. What? No tingle. I'll be right there. Yeah. Now, when we get here, come in. Paul. Oh. 
Hi, I'm Paul Sheridan. You must be Mr. Younger. Yes. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Your daughter's told me a great deal about you. Thank you, yes. <laughs> Miss Younger? How could you come here like this? Hi, I'm Paul Sheridan. Hi. Nice to know you. Hi, Paul Sheridan. I'm a great fan of the agencies. Hi, Paul Sheridan. Your campaign for the phone company? I loved it. Hi, I'm Paul Sheridan. Nice to meet you. No, no, that's okay. Don't stand up. Hi, Paul Sheridan. <laughs> nice to know you. To me, advertising is the poetry of the 20th century. Uh, I'd like to apologize to you, sir, for my ridiculous appearance. Obviously, these are not my pants. <laughs> ridiculous is not what I really meant. There's, there's really nothing ridiculous about these pants. I'm sure many of you have pants that are very similar. Maybe even this exact same pair. All right, that's enough talk, young man. May I see your portfolio? Uh, my portfolio? Samples of your work. Anybody got a pencil? We'll continue after these messages. My dream dishwasher? Well, it would be piped to the freshest mountain stream in the world with a pure waterfall right inside and a spectacular system that would scrub every dish on every side. Or you could have a Sears Kenmore dishwasher. It constantly cleans the water that cleans your dishes. Has a system that sprays dishes from every side and does it all with a single touch. Oh, that's even better. More innovation than you ever imagined. There's more for your life. At Sears. Breakfast in bed? Okay, what's the catch? Just thought you'd enjoy the rich, buttery taste of Shed Spread Country Crock. Mmm, an offer I can't refuse. And I want to taste of Country Crock, and she melts like butter. <laughs> Try rich, buttery Shed Spread Country Crock with fewer calories than regular margarine and no cholesterol. Baking muffins? With Shed's Country Crock Sticks. Country Crock Sticks? Uh-huh. Great taste and fewer calories than margarine, huh? Right, and here's how I get Country Crock's buttery taste in them. Here's how I get Country Crock's buttery taste on them. <laughs> Stick around, I'm on a roll. Oh. I mean a muffin. <laughs> Get your seeds shined up, grab a stick of juicy fruit The taste is gonna move ya Take a sniff, pull it out The taste is gonna move ya when you pop it in your mouth Juicy fruit is gonna move ya It juice the salt, it gets right to ya Juicy fruit, the taste, the taste, the taste is gonna move ya Morning is your time the earth wakes up with you Always feel that spark of life In everything that you do Grape nuts. For you, it's as natural as the morning. No sugar added, no preservatives. Just an honest, nutty crunch. Post Grape Nuts cereal. You know when you have it good. Yes, you know when you have it good. Now... Back to our story. Sir, do we really have time for all this? Uh, what do you mean coming to an interview like this without a portfolio? Let me see that. That's quite good, actually. Thank you, Cynthia Cat. Thank you. Jenny Stan Younger? Mm hmm. Oh, just a minute, please. Can this little boy use the bathroom? Oh, yes, round the corner to the right. Jenny Stan Younger? This is where Mr. Sheridan's having his interview. Uh, we said goodbye to him. He's in our past now. Sure, we may remember him fondly from time to time, but. There's no point trying to see him. He has his life, we have our lives. Those lives crossed briefly, but now it's time to use the ladies' room and move on. I'll take him in. Here, hold this.
Island of Tragedy. She will marry an Australian. He will marry the girl in San Francisco. But they will always think of each other. And then one day, when they're both very old, they will meet again. I am not Paul Sheridan. Where are those kids? I just saw them go in that building. License and registration. I'm trying to tell you, this is not my car. The man you're after just went into that building. Look, all we want is to get our niece and nephew back. You've got 17 unpaid parking tickets. How do you explain that? Not me! The man you want just went into that building. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Look, if you, you follow can stand it... here and argue all day long if you want to. I'm going to get those children. Excuse me. Don't. Come on, bud. Come on, bud. All right, let's go over the plan one more time. I go to the doors, and you kind of look down the corridor. And then I say, I want to see Mr. Shedman. And you run down the hall as fast as I can. I remember. Well, Franny's chasing you. I'll try to find Mr. Sheridan, okay? It's a bad plan. Well, we've got to make them know that they belong together. I didn't think they do. Well, it's not your job to think. It's your job to run down the corridor. Let's go. John Elliot, where are you going? I want to see where Mr. Sheridan went. John Elliot! Wait here, I'll be right back. Get to me! I've heard your name somewhere before. Oh, maybe a gallery opening. I've had one or two. You're not the Paul Sheraton that's involved with that Franklin kidnapping, right? Franklin kid? Absolutely not. Hi, Paul. God damn it. In the, in the weird pants. Hi, Franklin. They couldn't come in here. John Elliott. John Elliott. Oh, kidnapping. Oh, That's a mistake. What did you bring him in here for? John Elliott had to go. Excuse me. You must be Susan. Who are you? I have a proposition for you. Uh, You're under arrest. Now, wait just a minute. Bond and I have grown very close. You call the police. Yes. Oh, you got the police. Look, I can explain all of this. Come on. How does $500 sound? Ooh. I have never before been questioned by the police. I'm sorry. <sighs> this has been the most humiliating day of my entire life. First, you come dressed like a clown. I'm sorry. No portfolio. I'm sorry. Oh, and that girl. How could you? I'm sorry. Oh, a, a floozy. No, Franny's not a floozy. She sells traveler's checks at a savings and loan. My father was in handcuffs. I'm sorry. Oh, and those wretched little children. I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. Are you just going to say you're sorry for the rest of your life? It's beginning to sound that way. I did everything but go down on my knees for you. As a result, Daddy's willing to give you a chance. You can have the job. On probation, of course. First thing we've got to do is get you some decent clothes. I got you an apartment on the hill. It's small, but uh, it's in a fashionable neighborhood. No pets, I'm afraid. So you're going to have to dispose of that dog. Now, for that car of yours. No. No? No, I won't dispose of Bud. No, I, I, I won't take an apartment in the fashionable side of town. And no, I don't want this job. What? I was in here trying to imagine my life in this building, and I can't. I thought I could, but I, I, I just can't. I'm sorry. <sighs> there it is again. I'm apologizing. <laughs> See, and if I stay here, I'm going to be apologizing every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> You're not going to get another offer like this. You don't have any experience. You don't have any credentials. I can't love a man who makes less than my manicurist. What does she take in on a given week?
Get that filthy animal off my couch. Come on, bud, let's go. Yeah. I didn't have to the hand to show me some of the words. That's the thing you use in the Uh, Franny, Jessup? You let her go, she had a boat to catch. Come on, come on. Mr. Franklin, I, I haven't had a chance to tell you how sorry I am. Oh, no, no, no. There's water under the bridge. Listen, let me tell you. Maybe my first bid was a little bit low. I'm willing to go higher. I'm the first to admit that Bud's an exceptional dog. Did Franny say anything before I'll she left? No, I've Just goodbye. Mr. Sheridan, you can still catch her if you hurry. I tell you, when we were in that cell together, just the two of us... Come on, children, let's get in the car. It's only company for each other. You Could know you give me a ride to the dock? The dock? We can discuss a price for Bud. You got yourself a deal. Come on, Bud. You have to hurry, Uncle Bill. Her boat leaves it too. Someone's been eating in my car. it is. Every person has only one great love in his or her life. In Julia's last hope, Todd hired a dog sled. He had to go through the worst part of Alaska in the dead of winter. Mr. Sheridan, all great romance doesn't have to have an element of tragedy. was passing overhead. A ship steward approached her and said, Miss Hudson, 
A gentleman asked if you would toss this coin for him. He can't decide whether to get off at Sydney or Perth. Rosalie gazed at the coin shining in her hand. Heads at Sydney, tails at Perth. Alan Seelove stood before her smiling. I'm getting off at Sydney. He took the coin and spun it in the air. Heads, so am I. At last, he took her in his strong arms as the gleaming white ship sailed under the mighty bridge, bound for Australia and the New World. August 16th, 1986. Tomorrow, John Elliott and I will go home. Aunt Joan is writing a series of articles on child safety. Uncle Bill is taking care of Bud until Mr. Sheridan and Franny come back. Who knows when that'll be. I remember Franny said she wanted to go everywhere and see everything. This has been the most thrilling summer of my entire life. No matter what, I will always remember Whatever happens, I will never forget. I know in the years to come, I know in the years to come, I will always remember Franny and Mr. Sheridan, two people chosen by fate, fall in love on a Sunday drive. 